Greetings from Bermuda, this is BDA Limey, and welcome to Sagrada, or the, the digital adaptation of the board game Sagrada. Uh, so we're going to take a look at how to play the game uh, and look through the various modes that the digital version has available. So rather than running through the tutorial, uh, we're just going to go straight into a game uh, and I will explain the rules as we go. It plays two to four players, uh, we're going to play a three player game and on hard difficulty. Basically what we are doing in Sagrada is we are drafting dice, uh, coloured dice, uh, to fill in spaces on our board. The idea is that we're making a stained glass window uh, by building patterns of coloured dice. Um, and at the start of the game we get a choice of uh, four different uh, boards that we can play on. So each board has the same number of rows and columns, but they have a, a different arrangement of spaces on them. So a blank space, basically you can put any kind of dice in there, any color, any value. A colored space, you have to put a dice of that color in that space. And a space with a number of pips in it, you have to put a dice with that number of pips in it, but it can be any color. The main rule of the game is that you cannot place any two dice orthogonally adjacent to each other that have either the same value or the same color. And that's the kind of thing from which everything else flows. Some of these boards are harder to complete than others. And that's indicated by these number of pips in the bottom right corner here. So you can either choose uh, an easy board or a harder board. Uh, why would you choose a harder board? Uh, well, every one of these pips gives you access to uh, tools, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, but if you don't use them, then at the end of the game, each one of these counts for one point. So uh, I'm going to take, uh, let's just take the hardest one, why not? Uh, and actually these are called favour tokens. Uh, so we get to spend favour tokens on tools which let us uh, break the rules of the game basically, uh, should we need to. The way the game is played, it's played over 10 rounds uh, and in each round we will be drafting two dice. We have one private objective, uh, every player has one private objective which is always going to be what is the sum of the values on a dice of a certain color. Uh, so in this game, we're gonna get points for the sum of the values on yellow dice. Then there are gonna be three public objectives, which we'll see in a second, uh, which will give us various points. The end of the game, we score points for our private objective. We score points for the public objective. If there are any spots on our board that we have not filled with a dice, we lose one point. Uh, and any favour tokens that we haven't spent on anything, we get one point for each of those as well. And then whoever has the most points at the end of the, of the 10 rounds is the winner. So, choose our board. Uh, this is our private objective. And these are the tools that are going to be available to us. So every game uh, it randomises. There are three different tools. Uh, these are the things we can spend our favour tokens on. The first time anybody... Uh, any of the players uses a tool, it costs one favour point. After that, it costs two favour points for everybody to use. They've all got kind of funky names, uh, I guess, to do with stained glass window making. But they're all, yeah, changing the way that you uh, play the game. So uh, this one, draft a dice and place it in a spot that is not adjacent to another dice. You must have played or obey all other placement restrictions. And a couple of others, and we'll, we'll come to these in a minute. Um, Let's just go carry on and show you how to do the, the basic game. These are the public objectives for this game. So one private objective, three public objectives. Deep shades. So shade is the game's name for the number of pips on the dice or for the value of the dice. Uh, so all of these objectives are to do with the values on the dice. Uh, sometimes you'll get public objectives that are to do with the colors on the dice uh, or the arrangement of the dice. Uh, it just so happens that the three we've got here are all to do with the numbers. So, uh, we will get two points for every five and six that we have anywhere on our board, regardless of what colour they are. We will get five points for every row on our board uh, that contains different values. And we will get five points for uh, every set of one, two, three, four, five, six anywhere on our board. Okay, so that's kind of what we're playing towards. So here we go. So this is the uh, this is the board that we picked uh, with the arrangement of uh, different spots. Uh, and here we go. So um, the game starts by in a three-player game rolling six dice, 
and um, the first player drafts one dice from those rolled and then places it on his board. Um, so can we actually, how do we move? I don't even know how we move to C, there we go. Uh, so we can see he drafted a, um, a purple four and placed it here, uh, which is actually a blank spot. So the first dice that you place on your board has to be somewhere around the edges uh, of the board. Uh, and after that, you must place dices either orthogonally adjacent or diagonally adjacent to other dice on your board. And in addition, you must obey the rule of no two values, identical values may be orthogonally adjacent and no two colors may be orthogonally adjacent either. Um, so uh, yeah, he's, uh, so six dice were rolled. He picks one of them. Uh, then it's come to me. I will pick another one. Then it will go to the third player. He will pick a third one. And then the third player picks a fourth one. And then it comes back to me play it to pick a second one and then back to the first person to pick the last one. Um, and after we have all picked, uh, there will be one dice left. Uh, that dice goes onto the round track marker. Uh, and most of the time it doesn't matter what that dice is that's on the round track marker. Sometimes there are tools uh, that can use these dice as well, uh, but we don't have any of those in this game. Um, so yeah, here we can see our private objective. Uh, which is reminding us that we want to get yellow dice with high values, basically, as many of them as we can. Uh, and then these are the public objectives. So five points for the different uh, values in a row, two points for pairs of fives and sixes anywhere on the board, and five points for every set of one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and so all the other players, everybody has the same public objectives, and we can't see what their private objective is. So we don't know uh, what color dice they're trying to get high values for, um, so at the start of the game, taking high values is a good thing to do because we're then denying the high values to the other players as well. Um, so if somebody needs like greens, has a green private objective here, uh, then if we take this, it'll be kind of making it harder for them to. Anyway, so let's pick a dice. We've got five, a uh, three green, four fives, red two, blue one, and that. So normally if there was a high value yellow, we would try and pick that first and use it, but there isn't, so we can't. Um, so um, I guess we'll just take one of the fives. So when you select a dice, it shows you the, the valid spots to play it. So we can play it here, because uh, this spot needs a five. Could play it here. Uh, we couldn't play it here because this needs a two. We couldn't play it here because it's a green dice, not a yellow dice, uh, and so on all the way around. Um, so let's just start by playing it there, I guess. Um, and then we can end our turn. If we wanted to use a tool, um, one of these three tools, uh, we can do that at any point during our turn. And then we pay our favor tokens from up here. Currently this is showing us that each tool currently costs one favor token, uh, but you'll see when somebody uses it that will go up to two. Uh, but once we picked a dice, we've placed it and we end our turn and it goes to the next player to pick one. And he picks two because it goes uh, one, two, three, and then three, two, one, back to us again. Um, so our second pick. So we could take the two. So the, the two, it will let us place the pick the two and place it here. Um, but if we do that, we will not be able to place a red dice here because you can't place two dice of the same color next to each other. So we are allowed to place a dice on the board in a spot where we will, uh, stop ourselves being able to fully fill our board if we're not careful. Um, so you do need to think about which dice you're picking and where you're putting them. Um, so we could take the purple three and put it there on the purple spot. Um, which is fine because that's a two, that's a four, that's a six. So that won't stop any of those happening. Um, and also by expanding away uh, from the edge of the board into the middle, we're opening up more spaces that we can play in. Because after we've played this first one on the edge, then we always have to go adjacent to it. So that's why this spot is not showing up as available to play because it's not adjacent to any dice that we've uh, played before. So we'll 
take that one, put that there. And then the last dice goes on the round track to mark the first round as complete. For round two, we are starting. And these are the seven dice that have been rolled. So we got a, a yellow six, so that would be good for our private objective. Uh, it would also work towards this as well. Um, I need to keep in mind, maybe not so much this one. This is kind of just going to, I think, fall out of whatever we've got. Uh, but we want to try and keep the rows with different values uh, in every position. Um, and this is will just fall out of whatever as well. So the yellow six, where could we put that? Well, we could put it there, but then we're not going to be able to place a yellow dice here. So we don't want to do that. Uh, we could put it here, but then we won't be able to place a 6 here. Um, so, that spot, however, would be good. Because um, it's not going to stop us placing a 1 there or a 2 there. So, we'll do that and we'll end our turn. Sometimes you want to think a little bit further ahead as to which dice you're going to pick uh, for your second pick. Especially if, like us here, you know you're going to be... You've, you've got you've taken the first pick and so you're also going to have the last pick. Um, but early on in the game where things are fairly open um, you don't have to worry about that as much so we'd like to take the, the yellow two if we can because that will help towards our private objective but the only spot we can play it is there and then we won't be able to play a two there so we don't want to do that uh, unfortunately the red two isn't much better uh, there's only three valid spots to play it. That one again stops is going to stop us from playing a two there. This one will stop us playing a red dice here. And if we put it here, it stops us playing the two here. So this is the point where we want to think about maybe using a tool. So what are the options? Do any of the tools help us out here? So this will let us draft a dice. So in other words, pick a dice. Then place it in a spot that is not adjacent to another dice. So yes, yeah, so this breaks the normal rule of we have to play adjacent to our existing dice. So this could let us, for example, uh, take this red two and play it here, uh, which would be good. Other tools, uh, move any one die in your window, ignoring color restrictions on your window pattern. You must obey all other placement and adjacency restrictions. Um, this doesn't help us so much because um, we don't have the problem of not being able to place that dice on the board. It's just that if we place it, then it's going to stop us placing dice in future. That's not so useful right now, but it may be in future. Uh, and this one, move any one die in your window, ignoring value restrictions on your window pattern. So these two uh, are basically very, very similar to each other. One is ignoring color restrictions. But the dice you move must still obey value restrictions, so it can't be adjacent to one with the same value. Um, and this, you can ignore the value, but you must obey the color restrictions. So, we are going to do uh, this. So we've picked the red dice. We'll do that for the cost of one favor token. Um, and play it there. It's kind of bad having to use this early on in the game, but on the other hand, it, we only had to pay one favor token for it because we were the one who used it first. Um, and if they want to use any this one now, it's going to cost them two favor points. Okay, no yellow dice to draft, so what else can we do? Uh, well, the blue two would go nicely there. Uh, the green one would also be okay here. Um, purple four is not going to go there. Blue four we don't want to put there because of this. Uh, but the two could go there and or there. Um, blue four could also go up there. Again, I kind of want to open up as much of the board as possible. So if I play, like if I played the blue two 
here, then it allows me to play in these spaces, uh, which are currently closed off to me. So that feels like it's a good thing to do. It doesn't cause a problem for us in any of these spots. There's no blues, there's no twos. So let's go. Uh, and then we pick a second one. Um, so I don't know, what do we want to do? Could do a red three there. Opens up this spot as well. Oh shoot, I've been completely forgetting about this. Ah. Okay, to think about this. Uh, we, so we don't want to do a red three there because then otherwise we were, well, like we've already got a three in this column. Um, we could do the green one there, that would be fine. Green one would also go up there. Uh, yeah, let's play that there. Okay, round four. Still no yellow dice. Do very well for our private objective. Um, yeah, this isn't not looking very good. Um, neither the purple two, the purple two can't go there because there's already a purple there. Red two, we don't want to put there because of that. Uh, neither do we want to put the red two there. Uh, I guess we could put a purple three down here. The danger is we end up with like two fours to pick from. Two green fours. Uh, we're not quite last. We don't get quite get the last pick, but... Uh, I guess there are... Well, we don't want to put it there because then... Put it here. We have to have a four here, so then we won't get this public objective. Uh, I guess we could put it down... In this corner here, though. That would be fine. And maybe we do stick with that one. Go. Oh, he took both of them. <laughs> I wasn't exactly expecting somebody to take both of them. Okay, that's fine. Um, four up here is fine because we don't have a four in this row already, so we're still good for this objective. Uh, and also, we've already got a purple here, so we already can't play a purple six here, so... Uh, this is not making it any harder to get the dice in here, so that seems like a pretty good move. Plus, if he's collecting purples, then we've just denied him a high-value one. Round five. Okay, some yellows, finally. Can we use that yellow five anywhere? Uh, there would be fine. Keeps the row. Need a five in that row. It has to be a yellow. Doesn't cause us problems anywhere else. So, yeah, just do that. Okay, yellow two or a green two. Well, we'd rather take the yellow two because of the private objective. Um, he is actually a pretty good spot for it. The row doesn't have a two in it yet. Uh, this spot already can't have a yellow dice and it already can't have a number two. So it's not making it any worse in here. So yeah, seems like a good move.
But to some degree, this is this is something of a solitaire game. You you can just focus on your own board and not worry about what everybody else is doing if you want. Um, but I guess keeping an eye out for you know what is their private objective likely to be. Like you might guess maybe red or maybe green for him. Maybe green for him. Maybe he's green, he's red. So maybe if we see like a high value green or red, we want to try and use it. Um, but beyond that, um, yeah, beyond, and, and also I guess if we were, if we were really, uh, if we were really playing seriously, we'd, we'd look for which, uh, which dice the other players could or couldn't use. And we'd try and leave them with, uh, with a bunch of dice that are, are useless to them. Um, but it will, it just takes too long to try and analyze all that. So, uh, a lot of the time it's just kind of keep you, keep you focused on your own board. Um, all right, so what have we got here? The five actually can't go anywhere. So the only thing we can do is a blue two. A green four, oh, that's bad there. Okay, well, I guess we'll do the blue two. I hope we don't get left with two. Okay, no, it comes came straight back to us. That's fortunate. Um, unfortunately, though, we don't have any good options here. Two down here. There's already a two in this row, so we wouldn't get this for this row. Same with this row, and there's already a green next to it. Four, we don't want anywhere in this row if we're trying to get this objective for this row. Uh, down here is not good because there's a four here. Then we stop ourselves playing a four there. Um, ah, but now there is somewhere we can put the five, the purple five, because we played this. Uh, and that's fortunate <laughs> because that's a pretty good play because we have to play a five here. So it's not making life any harder in this spot and we don't have a five in this row yet. So... Turn seven. Um, is yellow two anywhere? Not really. These are not looking particularly good. Blue four could go in the corner. The blue three could go in the corner. I could go over there. Uh, I mean, this is where we could start thinking about, well, what, what are the other players likely to take? Uh, the three there is actually fine. That's, we're still good on this row with that. The three there is kind of bad for us because then that breaks it for this row. Uh, so we'd want the blue four here. Uh, green four's not ideal, and then these are just bad. So really, <laughs> we 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 just want the blue four there, and the purple three there. Can we tell which they are more likely to take? Well, he might take a blue four for that spot there. Although that would break, um, that would break his public scoring on this row. Uh, him, maybe more likely to take a blue, well, blue three or a blue four there would break the row. Can't do the purple three. I don't know. Hard to tell. Let's take the blue four. Put it there. And if the purple three goes, 
Didn't. Nice. So obviously the further along the game goes, the harder it gets to find legal placements. Especially placements that still are going to help you get the public objectives. Yellow six! We do have a spot we could put it in. <sighs> green six would also get in here. The green six is actually good in a couple of places for us. That's not good. That's fine. We're getting last pick. Uh, actually, the red one would be okay there as well. Okay, well, we do need a sick yellow, a high scoring yellow, so let's do that. I hope we get left with something. Useful and either of those any good. No, we can't use either of them. Bummer. Okay, so can we use a tool again? Well, this one's no help because uh, now every spot is adjacent to an existing dice, and it's actually you can actually see it's grayed out now as well. Uh, so move any one die in your window, ignoring color restrictions on your window pattern. Uh, ignoring color restrictions, but we must obey all other restrictions. This is where we've got to be a bit careful because we... It's easy to, to, to think you you can see a play uh, and you select that tool to use it and then you discover that there is no play <laughs> and then you've wasted your tokens. Because uh, once you commit, I think there is no undo. Um... Die ignoring color restriction. So we could move this four from here to here. Assuming by color restrictions. Hmm. Assuming by color restrictions, it's referring to both the spot you put it on and being adjacent to another dice of the same color. This is, might be what caught me out last time. But if we can move that there, then we can play this in here. Let's try it. Move this. No, it's not all it's not giving me any options. Uh, or is it? No, it won't let me do it. So ignoring color restrictions must just mean uh, ignoring the particular color spot on the board. I can undo this. I, I guess because it's not revealed any new information to me. Some of the tools you either re-roll a die or pull a die out the bag. Uh, and I guess, yeah, those, once you've seen what that is, you won't be able to undo. Um, move a die, ignoring value restrictions. Clear. So if we move this six up to here, does that help us? We 
You could then put the four down here. But then that blows our chances of getting this line. Do we have another four to move here? Nope. Must be a move we can do. Has to be a one in the corner. That's clear. What okay, so somewhere we could move this yellow to to without messing us up well if I move the yellow six here at least it still keeps the possibility of, of getting a full run on this one even if we lose it on this one but then we're going to lose it on one row anyway by not placing a dice. Because we, we could just skip and not place a dice at all. Uh, and then we're going to be minus one point at the end of the game or uh, having an empty spot. But more importantly, that's going to be one row that we just won't be able to get this for. I think I'm going to skip. I don't see an obvious... Four... Four or a one. Could go there as long as it's not one of these colours. We don't have any of them. Yeah, I'm just going to skip. Yep. Okay. Do anything with this. Well, we could put the five there. Three, four, five, six. And we'll get this for the bottom row. Uh, but then next turn, oh, we're in a really bad way again. Uh, these tools are not as versatile as they sometimes are. Um, Three there. I wonder whether we could take that and move it later, but I don't think that helps. I think we're going to end up skipping another one. But let's make sure we at least we complete this row. Other five points. Oh, we get to pick again immediately. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, I guess it's better to go here. We won't get the five for that row, but. Skipping won't help either. Final round. Ah, uh, blue and a three. Okay, he's doing shenanigans with the tools. God. Uh, 
Uh, we move. We could move that green one to there. Yeah, I, I can't place any of these dice. We could move the green one to there. And then put the purple one up in this corner. Ignoring value restrictions. So this is the one we want to do. The green to there. Although this row, hmm, actually, this row we've already lost. Is there any way we can still score the points for this row? Think so, because the only four we've got are these. Either of those can go there. I wonder if it's worth it. I'm, I'm spending favor tokens to avoid the minus one point for an empty space, but it's one point for a favor token. Uh, so spending a favor token to move this from here to here. Just so I can place this here and save myself one empty space isn't worth it. It would be worth it if this was still on for this. I suppose uh, maybe we're on... We'd be on for another one of these. What have we got so far? That would give us a second one. Uh, two twos, two threes, two fours, two fives, two sixes. Okay, so yeah, that would be worth it actually. So we will do that. Move that to there. And then play that one there. Yeah, that gives us another set of these, which is another five points. We're not going to be able to take the last dice. I don't think, unless we can do something funky with the tools again. Uh, but again, is it worth it? Uh, if we could play another one... I don't think so. Nope. I think unfortunately we're going to end with two empty spots. And that is the end of the game. Okay, scoring. How did we do? So, favor tokens. We had four unused favor tokens, more than everybody else. Sets of five and six anywhere. We got eight points off that. Rows with no repeated values. We had two of those, I think. Uh, sets of one value each anywhere. I think we had two of those. Some of the values on the yellow dice. Minus one for each empty space. Oh, we won. <laughs> Just by three points. That was close. That was close. And that's the basic game of Sagrada. Um, yeah, I, I can really, I really like this game. Uh, I think it's a really, uh, it's a really elegant game. Plays quite quickly. Um, but yeah, the, the board game version is is where I first played this. Um, and yeah, I can definitely definitely recommend that. Um, the so in addition to. Um, a basic uh, game versus the AI, which we played there. There is also... Well, there's, there's several local modes and there's a daily challenge. And there's online play as well. Although uh, there are basically nobody... Uh, nobody plays this online, unfortunately. So don't recommend it if you're looking to do that. Um, the campaign is, is kind of like the game that we just played. Uh, except you progress through a fixed series of boards, basically. And if you uh, win the board, then you get uh, three stars um, and stars unlock extra boards. 
Uh, and the Steam achievements basically come from uh, winning a game on each of these boards in the campaign mode. Um, but otherwise, it's basically like the uh, it's just like the single player version of the game. Uh, in addition, though, there is also a solo mode, and that plays a little bit differently. Um, so let's take a quick look at that now as well. So we have a choice uh, of how many tools we want to play with in the solo mode, and the more tools we play with, uh, the easy or the the more tools we play with, the easier it is. Uh, I have never won a, a solo game, so we're going to start on very easy right now. Let's see whether we can change that. So here is how a solo game works. So the basic rules are the same in terms of placement. In terms of objectives, we have two private objectives. So in this case, shades of red, shades of green, some of the values on the green dice, some of the values on the red dice. However, we will only score one of these and we will score whichever one is the higher. So if we've got 25 points on red dice and 18 on green dice, we'll just score 25 from the red. Picking the board again works the same way. So uh, favor tokens that are unused at the end of the game uh, will count as points as well. So if we think we can do the harder boards, then that would be a good thing to do. Uh, I think I'm going to take the easiest board in this case, um, given this is quite tricky. Uh, and then these are the five tools we have available to us because we are playing on the easiest solo difficulty level. Um, so these uh, work like the tools uh, in the main game, except that to use them, you have to use a dice of the color that's indicated here to activate it. And actually, is that instead of favor tokens? Maybe that's instead of favor tokens. Uh, we'll, we'll see in a minute when we play. But yes, these, these let you do various things. So in this case, uh, we can draft a die, take a die from the pool and then re-roll it. If it can't be placed, we return it to the pool. After our first turn, immediately draft a die. I think that's essentially useless in a solo game because we're not playing with anybody else. So we will always get our second turn immediately after our first. Uh, grows in pliers, draft a dice and then increase or decrease its value by one. Riding Stone, draft the dice and then flip it to its opposite side. And Lathekin, move exactly two dice, obeying all placement restrictions. Uh, and there are two public objectives in a solo game. Again, um, randomized. So in this case, uh, we've got the same one that we had in our last game, Deep Shades. Sets of five, or five and six, anywhere. Uh, and row color variety. So for every row that has no repeated colors, we'll get six points. Uh, yeah, so the favor tokens are not used in the solo mode, actually. Um, so paying for these is purely done using one of the dice from the pool. How do we win? We have to beat the score that the game sets for us. And that score is the sum of all of the dice that we do not use while we're playing the game. So in other words, we want to pick uh, as high a value dice as possible, because uh, any that we don't pick uh, are going in here and will make it harder for us to win. So let's see how we can do. I'd like the red five, um, because uh, red is one of our possible uh, public our private objectives uh, and this will is the highest value dice so we don't want this up on this track here um, so we could put that here for example and having two uh, red diagonally adjacent it's uh, a good thing um, there's no other red dice in this row and the sets of five or six it works for that as well so that seems like a decent first play and then our second pick Um, well, again, we could just take the next highest value dice and we could play that here. And again, that's not a bad pick because uh, there's, this must be a four anyway, so this spot already can't have a four in it. Uh, so playing a four here is a decent play. So that's the end of turn one. So currently we have five points to beat. Okay. 
Uh, we would like the green dice, ideally, not only because they're the highest, but also because, again, potentially a private objective. Um, it's going to take whichever of these is the higher at the end of the game. Uh, so... We could take the five, put the five there. Um, that seems alright. So we're not worried about different at the same value on the row now. We are looking for just looking at the colours on a row. So we'll do that. Then we'll take the six. And we don't want it on the bottom because we have to have a green dice on this row already. So maybe somewhere like that. Three or round three. Um, so greens, good for our private objective, but not the highest value dice. So maybe we want to take that pur uh, that uh, purple five. Ordinarily, it would be really good here because we've got five here and a five here. So, um, but it's not good because of this purple spot here, obviously. Um. Could put it there. But then what we're going to do with this green three, which we would also like to play. Where else could the fly? It right, only can go there. Three, we don't want it on the bottom. Could put it on the top. Blue three there would be decent. Again, having the same color diagonally adjacent to each other is is good. Uh, also, putting it there would be fine. Let's do that. And is it better to take three points in our favor or stop five points going against us? Uh, so this will be three in our favor, seven against us. So that will be net minus four. Whereas if we take this, uh, it's net zero. This is better, I think. So let's do that. Oh, whoops. I didn't commit the previous one. Okay, that's fine. Commit that. And then put that there. Commit that. <sighs> Lots of high values. Uh, well, all the sixes could certainly go there. sure and we could take the other six and put it uh, there actually is good again to the same color diagonally adjacent it's not going to cause a problem for these Six would be good. This. And it's a high value. So, yeah. And the other high value would be that one. That could go there, and that would be fine. Already got a six diagonally adjacent. Let's do that. Yeah, you'll notice we haven't used any of the tools yet, um, which is fine. Um, 
Although there's there's no penalty for using them in the solo mode. Um, Or is the highest? Uh, that's no good either of those spots though. Uh, blue four there would be fine. But blue four there would be pretty good. Because again, we've got a four diagonal. Blue diagonal there. Uh, and if we took the purple three, oh, that can't go there because of this. So that's not great. A green two up at the top would do nicely. Other option would be a red one on the bottom, but no, let's, let's do the green too. Blue four is the highest value one. Again, not good for there, not good for there. Purple two could certainly go there. But we have a problem. We could put the purple two there, but then none of the other dice. Oh, actually no, the yellow one could go there and we'd still be in the clear on this one, so. Sure. Well, that's five points going against us, which is not the best. The other option for the yellow one is to put it here, two yellows diagonally adjacent is good. But putting it here will open up this. Putting it here, though, there's only a limited number of dice that will even go there. So let's actually do that. Round eight. Can we get rid of the high value five? You certainly could, that would be an all right spot for it. green on that row if we can avoid it. Gah, we're getting... Getting stuck trying to get as many of these as possible. I mean, this, this is quite hard. I mean, it is six points for every row. What are our options? Draft a dice and then re-roll it. Could go for a different colour, but we actually do one if we put the if we put the yellow five here we don't want green or purple dice in any of the available rows that doesn't help uh that doesn't help either uh, wait hang on sorry i thought that was that but yeah that doesn't help that doesn't help draft after the other the side that doesn't help We've exactly two dice play obeying all placement restrictions. We need we need reds. That's what we need. Okay, well, let's do the yellow five. I think we're just gonna not be able to get this for all four rows, which is fine. What can we do with that green for? We certainly could put it there. do that. So this row is out. But we 
keeping the value of the dice that are going up to the track low. Keeping our target score as low as possible. Okay, a blue six. We'll go there. And then that red three will go there. And so that will secure that row. Final round. I haven't used any tools. Okay, red one could go in either spot. It's the other color we need. We need a yellow. Is there a way to do this? In, also in the solo game, the penalty for empty spaces is minus three points, I believe. So it is worth having empty spaces. Exactly two die paying all placement restrictions. Can we move? It doesn't, yeah, in terms of the colors, it doesn't matter. Yeah, we're, we're gonna miss another row. But we could meet, we could put the red, uh, the red one there and the green four there. And then, I haven't got this, but we have got this. I'm keeping only two value up in the track. So I don't know, that felt reasonably good even though i didn't use any of the tools so i might as well have been playing it on the hardest difficulty level but beating the target score is really hard 46 to beat the sets of five and six values anywhere eight points from that rose with no repeated colors we had two of those some of values on the green dice was the highest yes Minus three points for each empty space. No. Nope. We did it. We did it. That's the first time I've actually beaten the solo game. Wow. By one point. But there's not even an achievement for it. Ah. What a shame. Uh, anyway, that is the solo game. Okay, so the, the one other mode that's maybe worth taking a quick look at uh, is the daily challenge. I have not done today's daily challenge, so let's give it a go. Uh, there are scores on the leaderboard though, so a decent number of people um, play. Uh, I'm guessing 93 people maybe have played today. Let's see how we can do. Try to remember how this works. So the tools available, draft a die, then flip it to its opposite side, draft a die, then re-roll it. We have exactly two die, being all placement restrictions. Public objectives are count of diagonally adjacent same color dice. Scores however many you've got. Uh, sets of threes and fours everywhere, anywhere. And rows with no repeated values, five points for each of those. Okay, so this is slightly different. This is a sort of mix of the solo mode and the normal mode, I guess. So we are paying for these things with favor tokens now. Um, but otherwise, uh, and also we don't have two private objectives. It is just one private objective and three public. So let's see how we can do. And I'm assuming because it's a daily that the roles are the same thing. Everybody, although I don't know that because you you can you can redo the daily uh, multiple times to try and improve your score as well. Um, so maybe not. Anyway, it's also on quite a hard board today. Uh, so six favor tokens. So red is our prime objective, but threes and fours are good. Diagonals of the same color are good. The values are harder to get than the colors though, because there are five different colors and obviously six different values. Um, let's try this. 
turn two. Ah, uh, well, if we went a two there, that would help with di uh, yellows diagonally adjacent. Um, we need to bear in mind this. There is a fixed space as well. Now let's let's push out into the board so again we've got more places to go. The dice that go up here now don't matter, because we're just competing against other people rather than against the value on this track. No reds. Uh, well, I guess we can, we can kind of build up this way. Or there is no four on that row. Although the six would be no good there because there's a six over there. Let's do the four there. I want to leave room to get some reds. <laughs> yeah, really, the purples should be going on the purples and yellows should be going on here. We should be getting as many reds as possible on the other uh, board spaces. Uh, but we just haven't had red dice yet. Guess we can do that. Oh, didn't lock it in again. Fine, do that, do that. Go. Okay, red at last. So we definitely want to use that somewhere. Using it on a spot that has to be a six would seem to be a good idea. Threes and fours. We have two fours, only one three, so the three would be better if we can find somewhere good for it. Um, there. Ah! Lock it in again. Put in there. Lock that in there. Okay, round four. Another three and a four. Those are the ones we... But there's, I mean, there's only going to be so many threes and fours we can use. Um, yeah. Actually... This is getting harder if we want to go for... It feels like this is better to go for over this. Just put a green six down in that corner. Although, hang on. Three. If we're looking for threes and fours, a three could also go there and it could still allow us to do this. So, that's good. I made sure I could go somewhere else, which I can. Two, uh, seems decent. Where are all the reds? There's one, low value one. Nowhere we can put it, unfortunately. Uh, okay, well. That five would go there. Uh, the only ones we can play though are the five and the one. Five there. One. 
I guess the is better. Maximizes the diagonals. We're still good for this row. It leaves these diagonals for red. If we can get red to bit. Need three more yellows though. And this is going to be a hard spot to do because it's got a one, two, four, and a five around it already. And no yellows there. Ugh. Any space the four can go is there, which is bad because we need a four in the corner. Can't place the blue six. Blue two could go there. Should be all right. Couple six there, I mean, sure. I guess that's what we're doing. So yeah. I really want that red one there. Maybe I should be thinking about using these to allow me to get red ones on the board though. Might be a mistake. Ah, uh, yeah, because... Probably is. What is a three and a, what's a six? A one goes to a six, a three goes to a four. to get put in some yellow ones on here. So I think we've pretty much got to use that one. And then... Yeah, a red 4 is no good. A red 6 is no good. Let's put the red 1 down there. Hopefully we can get a red 5. Dear, this is going to be a very high scoring uh, game at all. Five is the only one we can place. So we are going to have to use a tool. Uh, that's fine, the five can go there. So, what can we do? We can, well, we can either re roll it with this and just pray. Move two dice obeying all placement restrictions is always tricky to think about. So the flip, we could flip a six to a one, lay it there. That is probably uh, two to a five. No, that doesn't help us. Does that go there? Two rounds left. Reds have been absolutely terrible. Terrible. Okay, the yellow five can go there, but that's not the best. Uh, the four can go there, sure. You can flip this to a two, that doesn't help us. We would need a two to flip to a five, that doesn't help us. We could re-roll this and hope we get a five, which seems like a terrible idea. We could re-roll this and uh, a six would work. Uh, but is not helpful. A three would work, but is not helpful. Uh, one would work and would be helpful. That would keep the dream alive. Uh, 
Or six, actually. A yellow one or a yellow six would be okay. Is there anything we could end up with that we just couldn't use? Uh, yeah, I mean, a two, a yellow two or a yellow four, we would not be able to use. God. Uh, although we could then use this to flip it over again. You know what, maybe we take a chance. Let's try and get a one or a six to go, you go in there. Confirm, cannot undo. One, brilliant. We just need the five. Last chance. And we could do it with a tool. We could, in fact, we've got to use a tool because we can't place any of these and we can't place, we've got, don't have a yellow. So we can't do anything about that. Um, fortunately, we can flip that. Put it there. Uh, is there anything at all that we can do here? We've got to obey all placement restrictions. We could move the two. No, we can't even move the two there. So there's nothing we can do. We're going to end up with one empty space. Fortunately. This is not going to be a very high score at all. Terrible private objective as well. Two from the unused favor tokens. Diagonals are the same color. 11 more points. Medium shade, sets of three and four. Row shade, rows with no repeated values. Did that on three of them, it's pretty good. Some of the values on the red dice, this is so low. Minus one. Oh, it is only minus one for an empty space. Oh, well, this is the daily challenge. Okay. The final score, 45. What's this? 445th in the world. Oh, dear. Uh, but you can you can try again for a, uh, like I say, for a, for a higher score if you want, which is, which is kind of cool, I guess. Yeah, I mean, look, top score, 83. Um, wait, where are we, like, 45? Yeah, oh, yeah, 445, there we are. But it's still, it's still a fun little challenge. That's a decent number of people uh, trying it as well for a daily challenge. That's pretty cool. And that is pretty much that. Uh, like I said, there is an online mode as well, um, but uh, there's not much going on. Um, I think it's fine if you've got some people to play with uh, and you can do a private game. Um, then as, as an implementation of the board game, I think this is really fantastic. It looks great, it plays well, the music's really nice and chill. Um, so this would be good to play online uh, with friends, but if you're looking for a pickup group, uh, yeah, it's I would not do it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, like I said, the campaign mode as well was the one thing we didn't look at, which was, but that's just plays like the standard game with a, a fixed set of boards. So there you have it. That is Sagrada. I would recommend that digital game, uh, or the uh, physical game as well. Uh, both excellent. Uh, and that is going to do it for this time. So, uh, until next time, thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. And this is BDA Limey signing out. Bye for now. Thank you.